in Connecticut and I wanted to share a couple tricks, things that I do um, that really help me when I'm traveling and it's four simple ways that we can stay motivated and really stay on top of our goals, especially when we're traveling. I know it's, it's tough enough for us to stay on top of things when we have a normal life going on and with everything that's happening right now, it's extremely hard for us to just find simple ways to be motivated just on a day-to-day -day routine. And when I'm traveling, I realize there's certain things that, that I do and uh, I wanna share it with you guys. And so rule number one, uh, or I should say tool number one, is um, start your day excited, right? This is one of those things that when we get up in the morning, uh, instead of being like, oh man, I gotta get out of bed and everything's already starting out with stress, we wanna start the day excited. And that's something that I've learned to do more so recently, you know, when we, when we get up. What's something that we can do with it that it can excite us and not add stress to us? Uh, one of the things that I'm doing lately, and this is for the past uh, 16 weeks, now that my son has been born, the first thing I do is I, I give my time to him. You know, for, for years and years, as long as I can remember, it was very easy for me to get out of bed. First thing I would do is look at my phone, I'm scrolling through emails, I'm responding to things, I'm starting the day off where I'm already in work mode. And even when it's something you guys love, we all know that work can be stressful. And uh, it is, especially when things aren't going exactly the way you want it to or the momentum isn't on your side. So uh, step number one is starting your day excited. And to me, the most exciting thing now is getting up and spending time with my son. I, I give him the first hour of every day now when I wake up. Even if he's not awake yet, I'll pick him up and I'll, I'll spend time with him in the morning and that's a perfect way for me to just start. And um, it makes me feel good about the day and I, I realize that that's the momentum and the shift that I needed. So. Uh, number one is start your day excited. Uh, number two is planning your day. You know, we can't go into anything and expect to be motivated or even successful without a plan. Uh, I'm a big advocate of, of planners and agendas and I've, I've done different um, uh, breakdowns of what I do, of how to plan your day. We all have different things and especially right now while we're in this pandemic, you know, our days are not as full as they used to be. Uh, at least mine mine hasn't. I know a lot of us have been impacted in different ways, but plan your day. It can be anything. You know, it can be like, okay, seven o'clock, I'm gonna get up in the morning. I'm gonna spend time with my son from seven to eight, from eight o'clock, and then at eight o'clock, I'm gonna make breakfast. I'm gonna do whatever it is. You know, plan the day out. Everything that you know that is happening that day, write it down on that schedule. It can be a weekly schedule, monthly schedule, planner, uh, and then break that down to a, to a daily, it doesn't matter. But as long as you have that written out in front of you, so every day you know what's happening. You know, schedule the things in. You know that you go to work from nine to five, okay, cool. Uh, write that in, nine to five, I go to work. For, and that, Then you schedule in the little things like, um, I'm gonna watch TV. I know it sounds silly, but at least it's planned out. That way, so you can start adding in other things. If there's things that you wanna get done, you could add it in between those already scheduled time slots. It's not going into these things and just expecting it to get uh, fix itself, because it's not. You know, if you have little things around the house, by planning your day, you could schedule it in, and then there's nothing more rewarding than taking a highlighter and just going, Whoa, mark that thing off, cross that off the list. And then you're starting to get those fulfillments. So you've already started your day excited, now you've planned your day, and when you get to cross things off, you're really getting those little incremental wins, and the small victories are what lead to the big ones. There is no big changes ever gonna happen, it's the little steps that allow us to get there. So, uh, step one is the waking up excited. Step two, is planning your day. Now, step three is something that I think is really important, that's reviewing your goals. These are things that I do all the time. Uh, I know there's days that I do miss it and I realize that the impact that it has on me, but I, I do this stuff religiously. Review your goals, you know, write down your 30 day goals that you wanna get done for the month and also have your big goals, the stuff that you wanna get done in the year, long term. You know, that way you keep those in the forefront of your mind. Um, when I write out my 30 day goals, that allows me to say, okay, now I need to plan out my week, I need to plan out my day. So however my day is structured, I can look at my, my 30 day goals and I can say, okay, these are the things that I know I can plug into play for my day because I go to work from nine to five, I'm with my son from seven to eight, so then there's different gaps where I can plug in these little things that I need to get done or that I wanna get it done. You know, these can be tasks, these can be goals, these can be little things that you just need to get done that you need to, you know, you want to make your wife happy or whatever it is. You can have these list of goals that you want to get done these 30 days and you can learn how to compartmentalize them and put them into play exactly where you want them. 
uh, based on your day to day schedule. You know, if we just have this long stuff in our head of what we want to do, we're never going to get it done. And then all of a sudden it's going to be like, ah, I didn't get that done. Ah, I didn't get that done. And then we start going in this habit cycle of not getting things done. But if we give ourselves the opportunity to plan, not only just the day, but plan our month out, we're going to start seeing more and more success with everything that we do. I mean, that's how fight camps work. We plan out the camp and we have a date and we have to hit all these measuring goals all the way up until that point until the fight gets there. And then hopefully we've done everything right. So when the fight date arrives, we've done everything we need to, to have the best performance we can. And that's no different. You know, if we plan out what we want to get done for 30 days, these are the things I need to get done. Now I can look at my actual schedule and say, okay, I'm going to plug in this here. I'm going to plug in this here. I'm going to plug in this here. So by the end of your 30 days, you've done it just like a fight camp. You've achieved all these goals. Now, it really also comes down to how bad do you want these things, right? Do you want to be lazy? Do you want to play video games instead of getting things done? And I think it's really important to keep yourself accountable. You know, those are the things that uh, are allowing you to get things done. You know, a lot of people make excuses for things not happening, but at the end of the day, when you make excuse for not getting, not getting things done, it came down on you. Like, what could you have done differently? What did you fill your time with that wasn't as important? Things like that. Um, so we've got step one is the wake up excited. Step two is planning your day. Step three is reviewing your 30 day goals. And step four is feeding your mind. Uh, I, it sounds kind of cliche, you know, a lot of people like talk about positive affirmations, but it's true. Um, how you talk to yourself internally is really what's going to dictate how you do anything in your life. You know, um, it's, it's hard when there's a lot of insecurities out there right now. And in general, you know, it's hard to stay positive. It's hard to not have negative talk. It's not, it's hard to have things said in your head that is just self deprecating. And it's so important to feed our mind with positive information, with goal setting information, listening to stories of other people. And there are so many resources that are out there. We can do podcasts, we can do audio books, we can do actual hard copy books. There's so much material that we have access to that's free. You don't have to pay for it. That allow us to keep the one muscle that we need to keep healthy uh, um, firing. And we need to do that more than anything else. You know, we go to the gym and we lift weights. And that's great, it makes us look good, makes us feel good, but we're still not working on this. We listen to music, we listen to nonsense. I mean, right now you, you open up social media, you turn on the news and it's nothing but negative, negative, people dead, racism, um, uh, uh, COVID. You know, there, there's nothing positive that's out there. So all that's gonna do is feed the dialogue and feed that narrative of negative to go after their goals. And they're afraid because they're, afraid of failure, they're afraid of what other people will say or think, they're afraid of letting people down, they're afraid of not having the answers, not being good enough, whatever it is. People in general are too afraid to even start something because they're already discounting themselves from being able to achieve it. And the most successful people in the world, whether it be business, sports, or anything, it's not that they weren't afraid. It's just that they weren't allowing to give in to the fear. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of people get the misconception that fear is as a weakness. And I would disagree. I think it depends on what you let that fear do. That fear can either drive you or it can push you away. And speaking for myself, my own experiences, fear has been exactly what has allowed me to do anything um, in my life that I can consider monumental. You know, it can be anything. I mean, I, I've been afraid of so much in my life. And in fact, the me from my early years would look at fear and make that the reason and excuse why I wouldn't do something. And now today, fear, if, I, if something scares me, I'm like, okay, let's look at why that scares me. Am I making a decision based on fear of the unknown? Or is there a real fear that's causing me not to want to do this? And nine out of 10 times, it's going to be the fear of the unknown. And if it's the fear of the unknown that I'm running away from, well, then fuck you. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to fight this thing. You know, that's wow. That's how I've done anything in my life. And when I start comparing these stories to other people that have done amazing things, it's the same exact thing, the same exact thought process. It's okay. It's not that I'm not afraid of this. It's that I'm not willing to back down. And most people in general are going to back down first. And I see that people 
are afraid to compete because they'll, oh, I didn't train enough or whatever their excuses they make in their head. They're afraid to open a business because it's not the right time. I've got to get these other things taken care of. They're afraid to start a family because, oh, I don't know how to be a father or whatever. My, my past history with, with my relationship with my parents isn't good. Those are all fears and they're valid fears if you let that be valid. You know, uh, I had my kid uh, 16 weeks ago, my son, and I am terrified. I was terrified then and I'm terrified now, but it doesn't mean that that's the reason that I wasn't gonna let that happen. You know, my wife and I talked about it and we we're like, yeah, you know what? It's terrifying, let's do it. All my fights that I've ever had have been terrifying. I look across the cage with the guy, I'm terrified, but I don't let that actually cause an effect to change the outcome before it's happened. And that's one of the things that most people do. They're gonna allow the fear to change the outcome or dictate the outcome before it's even happened. And that is a choice. You know, one of the things that is great about our minds is that we have a choice to allow emotions and thoughts shift in our brain if we continuously work on how to move them. And if I have a negative thought, I have a choice to allow that negative thought to grow or to remove it and replace it with something else. Same thing in a fight, same thing with my family, same thing in business. It is a choice. I can choose to let the negative energy pull me down and already kill any hopes before I even do it or I can let the situation play out and I can see what happens. You know, in fighting, I talk about there are moments that are fights in the fight that are way, way bigger than the actual fight itself. You know, people talk about, oh, go in there and fight. It doesn't work like that. There are small fights that actually happen in the locker room, and these are mental fights. These are moments. You have to fight that moment, and then it's on to the next one. You have to fight that moment, and then it's on to the next one. So when we're backstage, there's a moment, you're warming up, and then you stop. Okay, now I've got to... I gotta beat these thoughts because I know I know what's coming soon. I can't put any energy into that because it hasn't happened yet. I gotta worry about my emotions right now. I gotta worry about making sure that I'm breathing, making sure that I'm stretching, making sure that I'm working on the techniques that I need to apply when the moment matters. Then when they walk us out to the ring or the cage, same thing, it's a moment. I have to beat that moment. I get to the cage, it's a moment. I see my opponent, I have to beat these moments because if I don't beat that moment, the fear and the pressure and the stress of that moment is gonna influence the moment that comes next and next and next and next. And then by the time I realize it, I'm getting my ass beat in a fight because I did not beat and win that moment that happened 30 steps ago. And that's the same stuff that we have to do daily with, with, our, with our entire lives. You know, we can let negative people and negative energy drain us down, but if you do that, it's gonna dictate what happens next. You know, if you already if, uh, counted yourself out, well, it's never gonna happen. But we do have the option, we do have the choice to beat and combat those, those, those thoughts. And sometimes you have to lose a few times in a row for you to realize that you are making things harder on yourself. And if we could just say, okay, I lost this, this moment, or I lost this opportunity, or I lost this, this job, or whatever it is, we have to have enough courage to self-analyze that and look back at what did I do wrong or what could I have done better? X, Y, Z. Now I can actually break this down and I can go, okay, I'm gonna make these adjustments and then I'm gonna do it again. And we, if we fail again, we can't let that failure be a reason for us not to do it again. It has to be another building block. I have to take this again, bring it back to the lab, dissect it and do it again. Dissect it and do it again. Dissect it and do it again because eventually we're gonna get step and step closer to actually achieving it. And then once we do, boom, we get that successful moment. But that can't be when it actually just stops there. We gotta be able to take that and go, okay, this is now the process. It's not about winning the moment or the fight of it, it's about winning that process because it's the process that stays continued, right? So if I take the process and this is actually what excites me, not, not the results, the results are gonna be there no matter what. And whether my hands raise or it's not, the results are gonna be there, it's the process. So I can take this process to everything that I do and that becomes what I'm actually obsessed with. And if you do this, the fear of, of getting started will be gone. The fear of failure will be gone. 
the process is what allows us to actually dissect and really self-analyze everything that we're doing. So for those of you that may be too afraid to start something, that's too afraid to compete, or too afraid to actually pursue your goal, just pull it back a little bit. Look at the process. Write out the things that are scaring you. Write out the things that make you feel like you can't do it. And then start working on those pieces. And I promise you, you're gonna start seeing